This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, it's Chris Abraham, season six, episode 34 of the Chris Abraham Show. Trenta y cuatro, or trente quatre, trente, trente quatre, trente, trente quatre, trente quatre, or, uh, I try to try, I don't know. Uh, guy. I can't even remember the, how to count to ten in German this morning. Anyway, this episode is just a follow-up to yesterday's episode, episode 33. 33 is a magic number. Good morning. Wow. Last night, there was a, a guy by the name of, uh, I don't even remember, Hogue, Hoke, Hogman, Hoke. He was on last night's episode of the first half of last night's episode of Coast to Coast. Uh, I should look up to see who it is so I can make better reference and it is what i shall do the uh let's see last christmas i gave him my heart the very next day you gave it away now i've got that stupid song in my head sorry about that here we are uh so annoying when you have an app on your phone and then it goes into archive and you need to re-enable it and then update it and all that other stuff hogman Hogman? Anyway, he's supposedly like a a prophet or a like Nostradamus expert or a kooky pooky maluki. But last night was really compelling because he actually said all the things that I truly believe about what's going on in uh, in the world. And he to me he spoke it like it was, and uh, it was pretty insane to have that experience. And I definitely will make a point of, uh, definitely, oh, Richard C. Hoagland. Richard C. Hoagland, who, um, is, Richard C. Hoagland is a former space science museum curator, a former NASA consultant, and during the historic Apollo missions to the moon, was science advisor to Walter Cronkite and CBS News. For over 20 years, Hoagland has been leading an out, uh, an outside scientific team with the critically acclaimed independent analysis of possible intentionally designed artifacts on Mars. Richard and his team investigations have been quietly extended to include over 30 years of previously hidden data from NASA's Soviet Pentagon missions to the moon. So he is not a numerologist or a Nostradamusist, but he did say some fascinating things. And he said, you know, things that I believe, which is Russia is not communist. It's not secret communist. It's not crypto communist. Russia is a traditional orthodox country. And Vladimir Putin is a Russian Orthodox Christian, and they are only in the mood to maintain their territory and extend their territory in ways that make sense in order to include ethnic Russians who had been treated poorly by Western Ukraine and that there had been and has been uh, rocket attacks and missile attacks and and um cannon attacks and uh, various sundry shelling before the invasion began, that there was a hot war uh, before and that uh, Zelensky is an actor and that there are Nazis in Western Ukraine and that China has no interest in the kind of hegemonic world domination that America does and that America is very unique that way and that it's uh, violence. The world is getting really tired of American violence at the tip of whatever we call democracy or whatever we call social justice or whatever we call civil rights or whatever we call liberty or whatever we call freedom. And these are countries that just want to be trad wives or just want to be, uh, you know, former Maoists or just uh, rural people who have 
very small minds or very closed minds with regards to defining anything like that to be regressive and oppressive of the LGBTQ plus plus community, and that everyone is entitled to their own culture, and that everyone is entitled to their own belief system, and that uh, there is ultimately going to be a lot of pushback against a type of proto-revolutionary, proto-whatever, the a, a wolf in civil rights clothing, a wolf in uh, DEI clothing, a wolf in social justice clothing, a pit bull with a septum ring and a blue wig, and that uh, many countries around the world who want their Islam, who want their Russian orthodoxy, who want their Ethiopian orthodoxy, who want their Jewish orthodoxy, who want their evangelical orthodoxy, who want their uh, animistic orthodoxy, who want their uh, various and sundry small little cultures, you know, from Luxembourg to to Hungary, a country that's getting a lot of pressure for being, quote, too conservative and too traditional. But uh, in a world of sovereignty, you have to respect me as much as you demand that I respect you, right? There's got to be a reciprocity in the sovereignty, right? It can't just be, um, you need to respect my safe space, but I do not respect anything to do with your culture because your culture is regressive and uh, will kill the earth or whatever. And the kind of aggressiveness that's wrapped up in uh, climate activism or race activism or culture activism or uh, LGBTQ plus gay activism, uh, trans activism, Pacific Islander activism, Asian activism, uh, pro-Palestine activism, and so forth, uh, reminds me of the quote by Tyson, where, you know, everybody is really a tough guy until they get punched in the nose. And uh, I feel like when the main tool of protest is screeching, screaming, yelling, and doing uh, damage to uh, material, I feel like the rest of the world is tired of this shit, tired of our shit, and whether it's true or not, thinks that as we become more vocally aggressive and vocally intolerant, we also become least likely to fight back. We become visually more anti-gun, more anti-strength, more anti-aggression, more anti-violence, more anti-weapon, more anti-toxic masculinity more anti-patriarchy, more feminist, more pursuing feminism, more pursuing slightness and delicacy and frailty, more pursuing uh, veganism and um, fewer people committing to at least four years in the military or any kind of service or uh, becoming police or being trained or going into vocations or owning and being trained in firearms and so forth, that while there's this belief in America that quite possibly, um... Hey, come here, come here. Like, well, quite, well, quite possibly, we are the most aggressive country at the moment uh, when it comes to judging other people based on their personal safe space beliefs that are not consistent with your personal protected safe space beliefs. And in your aggressive desire to remove the freedom of expression from people who you believe to be um, deluded in their belief of Sky Daddy or their belief that they that that climate crisis is a hoax or or their unwillingness to use vaccines or their unwillingness to send their kids to public schools or or. Uh, and, he, uh, and, and, you know, very literally trying to find legal ways, not physical or violent ways, but smart people ways of trying to prevent a democratic process in order to protect democracy. Right. That's what a lot of people are going to think globally uh, as we make outward fun of the farce that is the uh, next Putin election. Uh, Putin and all of his merry band of bricks people 
are going to be making fun of our election, where uh, obviously the Democratic Party and Biden can win with a fair fight. Because the thing about democracy is that it's democratic, right? More people vote for Trump than vote for Biden, then Trump wins. Unless, of course, you need to make sure that Trump doesn't get reelected by any means necessary. And it's really important to make sure that this kind of behavior, which enables one to do whatever one needs, what, you know, to do whatever one needs to do in order to after a process that allows America to be a liberal democracy and not a, what, uh, uh, authoritarian state means that if you are really on your heels and unwilling to, to win through organic democratic means, then you need to kill one to save a thousand, right? You need to, you need to do whatever you can. You need to make sure that, uh, three or four years after, uh, Trump is out of office, you need to attack him with every civil and criminal accusation that you can find or muster. And then you need to remove him from the ballot and you need to do whatever it takes to uh, make sure that it doesn't happen in protection of the, uh, of democracy, the democratic process. So it's sort of a, I don't know, it's sort of a, an amazing gamble. It's an amazing gamble. It's certainly not going to Actually, it's gonna. It's actually gonna have a, an incredible blowback. I'm afraid, um, and who you know, it's almost impossible to to uh, to predict like what is ultimately gonna happen. Um, and I dare say that it really listening to Hogman makes sort of uh, reflects a lot of the the way my brain is working in terms of uh, of of. Palestine, in terms of Israel, in terms of Russia, in terms of China, uh, in terms of the fear mongering, in terms of attributing, like attributing a whole host of things that aren't real and aren't true to and projecting the kind of global aims and global uh, attack dogism that America is known for and projecting that out into uh, into Putin's Russia or into uh, Zheng, Zheng, is that his name? To his China or to anybody else for that matter, right? I don't believe that there's that level of global ambition. I feel that there's, um, you know, in many cases, like there is, uh, there's enough when you have a pit bull that is as aggressive and as much of a, of a, of a, of a hunting dog as America is, all you have the strength and resources and army and military for is to keep America at bay, right? So all China wants to do is keep America at bay. All Russia wants to do is keep America at bay. All the Middle East wants to do is keep America at bay. All uh, Africa wants to do is keep America at bay. Um, over the last 50 years, there have been so many broken promises and there's been so much enslavement and there's been so much bait and switch using, you know, a f every four year new president as an excuse to break promises that the previous administration made. Um, I don't see how we have any equity globally unless we're already inside uh, our thing, La Costa Nostra. Unless you're already inside the umbrella, you're already under the umbrella, you're already behind the wall. And your success and failure, your financial income and your uh, very existential uh, movement through the world and your uh, very ability to, uh, you know, to provide for your people and to provide their Medicare and medicine and education and training and to make sure that there's a market and that there's um, there's a. Uh, uh, beneficial trade deals and all that other kind of stuff. Unless you're in a sweetheart deal with America, uh, you need to find a way to put your foot down and you need to maintain your resources because at some point America is going to come at you and is going to try to uh, foment uh, color revolution in your country or is going to try to puppeteer it or um, Zelensky it or do something that is going to wrest control 
and put you with extreme, uh, extreme prejudice underneath the umbrella of American imperialism. So with that note, I have downloaded both hours of the Coast to Coast episode, and I have run them through uh, voice to text translation, and I'm going to go through both hours and I'm going to extract my favorite uh, excerpts from, uh, from it, and then I'm going to post them onto the chrisabraham.com blog, um, and I'm going to put them in block quotes, and then I'm going to link to where you can listen to them on Coast to Coast, but I'm afraid you're going to have to pay to listen or do some other type of research. But I'm really going to share the quotes extremely promiscuously, and then also give you as many links as I can to to um, uh, to the, the dude's Hogman to his uh, to his 411, so that you can follow up and learn more stuff about him. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it. That was season six, episode 34 of the Chris Abraham show. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I do a good enough job of describing how I feel. I seem to, when it comes to, I seem to have a filter, an active filter that makes me not want to believe what really is happening in my kind of intuition and what I really believe is going on and that it is so contradictory to my smartest Renaissance weekend and my smartest GW and my smartest DC and my smartest best friend, and that all y'all have a completely different, like, baseline concept of what's going on in the world. And, uh, and it's really frustrating, and it's really reassuring when you hear something like from this dude and you believe almost every paragraph of his spoken word on a late night show. Mind you, I was in and out of sleep, so it might have been in my dreams and I might have just been uh, manifesting my id and ego and super ego in some sort of super fused interpretation of what he was saying. And I might not get that when I go into the transcriptions and try to clean it up through ChatGPT. Anyway, this was season six, episode 34, Chris Abraham show. I will talk to you soon. Have a... Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. I'll probably do another one of these tomorrow or tonight. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes until next time